Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we will be creating a brand new original lantern that I designed that is made with all Dollar Tree items. Now this lantern can be displayed in more than five different ways which makes it very versatile and can easily accommodate any season and decor. Now as always, all of the projects that I create have complete supply lists in the description box so you can use it for reference as you gather up your supplies. Now I'm so very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I have to say hey hey to all of my subscribers, and if you're a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you consider subscribing as well, and stick around to enjoy these crafts and all the different ways that I'll show you how to style this in your space. So now, let's just jump right into those projects. Now to start, we're gonna need two of these display trays in any pattern from the Dollar Tree. And we're also gonna need some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. So we're just gonna first start off by grabbing one of the trays and you want to take note of the inside dimensions of the tray. Now the tray measures about four and a half inches up and 11 and a half and three fourth inches wide. So you wanna keep this in mind when making your frame. Now I'm going to show you two methods and the first method involves no cutting of the wood blocks for the easiest way. So what we want to do is we want to grab up four blocks and we are going to make a four block set. Now you do want to make sure you definitely use wood glue for these projects for the best hold. So we're going to start by gluing two of the blocks together and then once they're glued together lay some glue across the top of those and stack two more blocks on top to make your four block set. Now once you make this, we are gonna make two of the four block sets and here they are all done. So the next set of blocks we're gonna be joining together are eight blocks and we are gonna just stack those on top of each other just like we did the first time and we're gonna end up making four of the eight block sets. And here are all four of those ready to go. Now the last set of blocks we are gonna use are 10 blocks and we're gonna put five in a row and we're gonna stack five on top to make the 10 block set. And we're gonna make two of these and here are those good to go. So now we're going to assemble our frame. So we're gonna take our two shorter sets and we're gonna put those at the end and then take our 10 block sets and we're gonna sandwich those in between to make a rectangle as shown here. Now once that's formed, we're going to join everything together with our wood glue, just making sure you put a generous amount on each end. And then once you get all that glue adhered, you want to press the frame firmly in place together. Now once that frame sits for a little bit and it's solid, here is what it looks like. And now we're going to take our eight block sets and we're going to put one on each corner to form the legs. And here's everything all glued together. Now what you want to do after this is you want to take one of your trays, go ahead and remove any labeling that's on there, and you want to use your most heavy duty tray, in my case it's the silver tray. And then you want to take your frame and you want to sit it on top of the tray like a table. Now as you notice here, this frame is smaller than the tray bottom, so you will lose some real estate when using the blocks as they come in the package without cutting, but this will still work for this project. Now to adhere it, we are going to use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to add it to the top of our tray. Now you do want to make sure your legs are as centered as possible since they don't actually reach the corners of the bottom of the tray. So now just add your hot glue to each leg and then add your E6000 on each one of the legs and then you want to adhere it to the bottom of the tray. And I'm just demonstrating this since I will be using this method, which is a method two and cutting my blocks to size. 
Now for this method, I am going to be laying out my blocks a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do is I wanna lay them out and I want to actually stagger my rows on top of each other. Now staggering the rows by placing one block across the seam will actually help it stay stronger and it's more durable when you glue it together. And since we'll be cutting it, it doesn't matter um, how long you do it because you'll be cutting them to size. Now the first set of blocks is going to be 13 blocks and we are gonna make three sets of them. So we're just going to first of all start gluing our first row together, which is a row of seven, and then we'll be gluing a row of six right on top of it. Now you do wanna make sure each block covers a seam and this will make sure that your pieces are really strong and durable, which is the best way to do it if you're working with the blocks and you don't, uh, and you will be cutting them. So here is one of those 13 block sets and you wanna repeat it until you have a total of three. Now the next set of blocks, we are gonna be using a total of 21 blocks and we are gonna lay them out with a row of 11 on the bottom and 10 on the top as shown here. And then you just wanna glue those all together just like we did for the first one and we are going to be making two sets of these. And here are our two sets of 21 blocks all adhered together nice and dry. So to cut my blocks to size, I will be using a miter box and you can get this for about 11 bucks at any hardware store. So we're gonna take one of our 13 block sets to start off with and we're gonna start by cutting off that block end so we know we have a nice straight edge to work with. Now once we have that straight edge cut off, I'm going to be cutting two four and a half inch pieces out of this one 13 block set. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it where I'm going to cut it, place it back in my miter box and I'm gonna cut it out. Now if you don't have a miter box and you have an electric saw or jigsaw, that will definitely work as well. So here is one of my four and a half inch pieces and then I'm gonna cut another four and a half inch pieces with the remainder and here are the two four and a half inch pieces ready to go, all nice and cut. So for the other two 13 block sets, I'm gonna cut two 10 and a half inch pieces and for our longer ones that are 21 blocks, I am gonna end up cutting four eight inch pieces out of those. And here are all of our pieces, two at four and a half, two at 10 and a half, and four at eight inches. Now, as another option, you can use garden stakes or square dowels in similar sizes for this project if you don't wanna glue blocks together. Now, I picked these up from Dollar General earlier this year, and they were only a dollar a piece, but you can get them at a hardware store, and you can use these cutting dimensions to cut these as well if they are similar in size. So now it's time to put our frame together and the frame goes together the same way that we did for the non-cutting directions. So we're gonna take the two shorter pieces on the ends and then sandwich in our 10 and a half inch pieces in the middle. Now this rectangle is slightly larger because this will fit the dimensions of our tray as we outlined earlier. So we wanna glue each end on the end of that rectangle there and then we're going to just squeeze that into place and allow that to set. And then of course, once it's set, we're gonna add one of the legs in each one of the corners with that wood glue, and here it is, and just allow it to dry. So here is our frame, all nice and dry and ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and set that to the side, and now we're gonna pick up where we left off. We're gonna start with the topper. So now we're going to add seven of the blocks in a row here, and we wanna glue these all side by side. Just add your wood glue in between each one of those blocks and press them close together, wiping off any glue that oozes out of the seams. And here is one solid seven block piece. And now we can add the pieces on top. So first I'm going to go ahead and grab five blocks and I wanna put five blocks along that top side of your seven block set. And then we're gonna put five blocks along the bottom side as well. And we just wanna evenly space these apart. 
And then at the end, we're going to add two blocks, one on each end, and this is what it will look like. So now we're just gonna go in with our wood glue. We're gonna set everything in place and allow it to dry. And here is what the piece will look like. So now we're gonna add a topper. I'm gonna use a napkin, napkin ring from the Dollar Tree. You can use a wood slice. And I'm also gonna use a binder ring for the top, or you can use a shower curtain ring. Now to make holes in your, in your napkin ring, I'm just gonna take the tip of my hot glue gun to make a hole to go right through my napkin ring. And I wanna do this on each side of it to make a little hole. And then I'm gonna take my binder ring and I am just gonna feed that binder ring through each side of that napkin ring, making sure you squeeze it nice and tight to where it fits right in there as a little loop. Now we'll be putting this on top of our topper and I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue on the inside where that binder ring comes through so it won't slip out of place. Now I'm gonna secure this topper to the blocks with some E6000 first going around the inside edge. And then I'm gonna follow up with some hot glue going around the inside edge. And then I'm gonna place it right in the center of our tumbling tower block uh, topper there, making sure you press it firmly in place. And then what I wanna do is I wanna follow up with more hot glue on the inside, going around that inside edge, definitely being generous to make sure that this piece will be nice and solid in place. So now that our piece is nice and dry, we're gonna start the painting process and I am gonna be using some black acrylic paint. Now I'm gonna start on the inside, making sure I get those inside edges and the in between those blocks and then going on the outside. And here is the piece all nice and painted. So now you could just sit it to the side to dry. You don't have to paint the bottoms of the blocks because those will be glued to the tray. And now we can go ahead and paint our frame and we are gonna be using black acrylic paint for that as well. And you can go ahead and apply one good coat of that. This paint does give really great coverage. So we're just gonna do one coat over the entire frame. So now that the frame is dry, we are gonna add it to the bottom tray of our lantern. So we're gonna sit it right on that flat top edge. And as you can see, all four corners meet the corners of the tray because we cut these to size and we're taking advantage of all that real estate. So we're gonna use a combination again of E6000 and wood glue on the bottom feet of our frame. And then we're gonna place it right on top of our tray. So I applied the hot glue portion to one side first, and then I'm gonna flip it around and, and lift it and add it to the other side, making sure that it's nice and secure. Now this combination does make this really secure, but if you guys know me, I am gonna be tossing this around quite a bit and I want it to be extra secure. So I'm gonna be adding some screws to the bottom. Now this is totally optional, but I am gonna be adding some number six one inch wood screws to the bottom of the tray just to make sure that this all stays nice and secure. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and in each one of these corners, we are gonna be drilling a pilot hole and I'm gonna be using a 7 64th drill bit in my drill to drill these pilot holes in each one of the corners. Now, if your legs are lined up exactly in a corner, you could just drill right into the corner at the bottom of that tray and it'll go right down into the center of your wood piece. And then once all your pilot holes are drilled, we can add one of those screws in each one of those pilot holes. And here it is, all of the screws are now in place and your frame is nice and secured to the platform.
So now we're gonna take the top portion of our lantern and as you can see, it's a different material. It's the same size, but it has a shiny finish. So what we're gonna do is dull that out a little bit and we're gonna remove all the stickers first. Now to dull it out, I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna lightly sand all over that backside of that tray. Now ideally, it's good to get two of the same trays, but I could not find another one of those silver ones. So I'm gonna sand this one, wipe it down, and as you see, when it dries, it does give a more dull effect and you know it does kind of look like worn metal which is what I'm kind of going for So here's another option. I have these tap lights that I got from Dollar Tree and I did paint the outside black. And what I'm gonna do is on the underside of the top of the tray, I am gonna put two tap lights inside so I'll be able to light my display when I desire. So I'm just gonna peel the backing off of those and place them in the center. And if you use the method where you cut to size, the top of the tray, frame will not get in the way of those lights and they will fit perfectly. If you use the non-cut method, then you will have to use fairy lights or some other type of lights. And then finally, you can go ahead and add your topper to it. So we're gonna use a combination of your hot glue and your E6000 and center that right in place and glue it there and then wipe it off, wipe off any of those hot glue webs that actually have been dangling around there. So now we're gonna test fit it, put that topper on top, and everything fits perfectly. So you notice there's a little white edge around the top of my uh, lantern. So what I'm gonna do is take some more of my black acrylic paint, and I'm gonna go over that edge with that black acrylic paint covering up that white edge. And here's the edge of the lantern all nice and dry and you can see that it blends in perfectly. And then once it dries, we can go ahead and put our lantern together. We're just gonna set our topper on top. It fits right snug in place. And here is what the lantern looks like um, all put together. It is perfect and ready to go. Now, if you wanna amp up the look of your lantern, I am gonna be using some of these Dollar Tree chopping mats to do that to add some frosted windows. So here's the frosted window option. We're gonna need two packs of the chopping mats from the Dollar Tree. Now, I'm gonna be using my grid mat for this. This will help me with my alignment and everything. So the first thing we wanna do is grab your lantern frame and we wanna measure the width of it and we wanna mark that in its 11 and 3 quarters inches. Then we wanna measure the width of the side and this should measure four and a half inches. And then we need to measure from the tray bottom to the very top, and that measures eight and three quarter inches. Now these uh, measurements are important and it'll differ from lantern to lantern, so you do wanna make sure you measure for your project. So to make the front and back of the lantern, which is the widest portion, we will need two sheets of, of the chopping mats. Now we'll be using the 11 and 3 quarter inch measurement and we'll be using the 8 and 3 quarters measurement. So I'm just taking my ruler and a pencil using those measurements as a guideline and I am making the square or the rectangular shape of the opening of the lantern making it 11 and 3 quarter inches wide and 8 and 3 quarter inches high. Now when you mark it on the doll side as shown here, you'll see that the pencil marks are very visible and all you have to do is cut these out with a pair of scissors or you can use a utility blade. So here is our square for the front of our lantern and now all you have to do is take it and place it right on top of your other sheet and just trace the um, size on there. You don't have to remeasure it, we could just trace it right on there and then cut that out. And now you have the front and back panels of your lantern all ready to go. So now we're gonna grab that second pack of chopping mats and when we grab this one, we're only gonna need one sheet out of this package. Now for this one, we are gonna mark the sides of the two panels and two panels will fit on this sheet. So each one of the two panels, there will be four and a half inches wide and eight and three quarter inches high. And here we have outlined two of the side panels on this chopping mat.
And now we just cut those out and now we have the two sides ready to go. So now that we have all four pieces ready to go to cover our lantern, we can now start putting them together. Now I decided to go with this black electrical tape from the Dollar Tree. This will be the perfect thing to join these pieces together since the black lining will actually blend in with the legs of your lantern. So you wanna take a side panel and a front panel and you wanna lay them evenly side by side. And then you wanna take a strip of that electrical tape and run it down exactly the center down between those two pieces. Now you want to leave about an inch or two overlapping each one of the ends so you can fold it in and secure it. Now once you do that, that piece is nice and joined together and now you can add on another one of your panels. Now next to the large panel, we'll add another small panel. We want to line that up, add some electrical tape to that as well. And here are the three pieces. And then finally, we're going to join in that last panel, which is the last front side of the panel. And we're going to secure that with the electrical tape as well. Now, once all the panels are joined together, we're gonna flip them around. We're gonna make sure that the shiny side is in, and then we're going to join in that last seam to join everything in together. And this will form a rectangular box and everything is secured together. Now we're just gonna go ahead and test it out. We're gonna open up our four panel design and we are gonna slide it over our lantern. Now, if our measurements are correct, it should slide on with no problem. And here is the fit. It is perfect and everything works out. We're gonna put that lid on and make sure that that's not getting in the way either. And it looks great. Now, if you wanted a clear frosted design, that would be great. But if you guys know me, I always love to amp it up just a little bit. So what I wanna do is I want to actually create a design on the front and the back of each one of these frosted panels. So the first side, I want to make kind of a diamond panel um, to be a decorative accent on this frosted window panel. So what I'm doing is I'm taping down the frosted panel to my mat, and then I'm taking my ruler and I'm gonna start drawing um, diagonal lines. Now I like to start from corner to corner in the center and then work my way out. Now my spacing is about an inch and a half, but I'm kind of eyeballing it. And I wanna do this all across the front of that mat. Now, once all those diagonals are done, we're going to go the opposite direction. Again, we're going to start corner to corner, and then we want to draw those diagonal lines as well. So I've done all the diagonal lines and just taking a look at it, this is the pattern that we are going for. Now to mark out my diagonal lines, what I'm doing is I am cutting several strips of electrical tape and this I'm going to be using to go across my lines. Now, of course, the electrical tape is a little thick, so I am cutting the electrical tape into one eighth inch strips. Now, if you have a cutting machine and wanna cut strips that way or have another method, please feel free to do so. I'm trying to stick with all Dollar Tree items and make it as easy as possible. So electrical tape did come in handy for this. So we're gonna take one of our strips and these were cut at about 1 8 inch uh, sizes and we're just gonna go right over our line design that we drew. Now we want our tape to kind of overlap and we can trim that off later, but we're gonna go ahead and cover all of our lines on our design. Now all of one direction is done and now we're gonna start laying them across the opposite direction. And here is the total design complete. And all you have to do now is trim off all of the excess hanging off the ends. And here's the design all done. I love how this looks. I think it looks so neat. So this will be the front of the lantern, but we wanted an option on the back as well. So for the other frosted pattern, I'm gonna do something a little bit more simple, but still elegant in a way. 
So what I want to do with this is I took a piece of some craft paper and I'm just going to fold it down into a rectangle the width of the, the width of the front of the lantern. Then I again fold it in in half and I wanted to kind of have an arch across the top. So I'm starting in the middle where the fold is and drawing a line all the way down to the open corner. And then I'm just going to cut that line all the way across. Now once I open this up, I will have a kind of arch design going across the top. Now if this looks good, that's great, or you can make any adjustments that you need to make. Now in order to get this design on my lantern piece, I'm going to use a piece of cutting machine vinyl. Now Dollar Tree does, does sell the black vinyl there, so that would be perfect to use for this project. So I'm going to take that black vinyl and I'm going to lay my template right on top and I'm going to go ahead and tape it down so it doesn't shift. Now once it's taped down, I'm taking a utility knife or you can use an X-Acto knife and I am just gonna cut out my arch design out of that vinyl. Now here is my vinyl arch all cut out. So now I just wanna take my, my front display and I wanna place it right on the top and make sure everything fits okay. Now, if it does fit, we're just gonna peel off that backing and then we are going to apply it carefully to the top, just making sure there are no wrinkles or bubbles getting in the way. And just smooth it out with your hands and everything should fit right into place. And here is what the arch will look like on one of the window panel displays. And here it is, you guys. Okay, now I'm so blown away on how great this lantern turned out. Now this display option has been decorated with an open design and I have placed some candles with some greenery inside. Now I love how the topper turned out and how everything fits so well together. Now you can place anything you like inside this display too. Now I think that this display would be a perfect option for all seasons. Now then for the holidays, I added some white houses and some greenery. Now these look so great on display. Now, and I have used the optional tap lights inside to highlight that scenery. Now just imagine all of the options that you could put on display using the lights. Now let me know what you would set under the lights in your lantern. Now for another option, you can remove the top and have an open display for your decor. Now this would allow you to place large bundles of greenery or taller decor without any top limits. And you could also drape and lace greenery on the top of the frame too. Now this is such a cute and easy way to be creative with your decor. And speaking of open designs, you can use larger or oversized battery candles, which is great with or without the top and perfect for the holiday decor and even flip this around upside down. And now you can add your frosted window effect. Check it out. Now this option looks totally gorgeous and I really love the ambi ambient glow of the candles and it really looks like a small wood burning stove. Now let me know what you think of this look in the comments below. And finally, just flip it around to the other side for the diamond grid pattern option. I just love it. Now, I really love creating projects that are multi-purpose and have so many options for you all to enjoy. And as always, I love all the different ways to display this lantern, but let me know in the comments which way was your favorite today. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.